Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Chara Kirk. What's up? We are looking at Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness deleted scenes, cameos, opening, and more from Heavy Spoilers. Thank you, Heavy Spoilers, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciate it. Y'all, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, please, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this sucker up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Otherwise, sling ring you out to the Himalayas. Maybe, I mean, that'd be nice. Maybe, you, maybe this is where we want to be. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. It's cold up there, though. It is. Just throw me a jacket. A lot of bodies up there. A lot of people waiting to get to the top. Oh, yeah. No, I don't need to go to Mount Everest. Did you just put me... Here? That's what I was thinking was Everest. Anyway, okay, here we go. Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul. And though Kevin Feige Hello, tried to Paul. cast a memory spell to make us forget all the scenes that we know are going to be in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the memory still remains. Mm. Throughout this video, we'll be going through all the leaks that line up with the theatrical release, the cameos that the creative team have talked about. I just realized that that, like, that was totally, uh, what you even call a it? Deep fake. A deep fake. Yeah, yeah was I was really like, good. that looked so good. It did. I'm like, where did they get that footage? When does Tom Cruise put his hand up like that? I know. I've never seen that footage. Right. That was really good looking. Like, like Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Oh, 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 team have talked about and the scenes that didn't make I mean, the final seamless. cut. We know from interviews with both Sam Raimi and writer Michael Waldron that there was 40 minutes cut from the film and that the reshoots also did some things differently to what we got in the film. Full spoilers ahead for what that was as well, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out, then I highly recommend that you check out now. Please hit the thumbs up button, otherwise I'll hate you in every universe. And don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns from Paul, the dumbest man alive. Mm. Watch your mouth. Now you might remember last <laughs> year that we did a big video discussing the plot leaks for the film, and now that the movie's released, having gone back to these, they were pretty much 90% right, with some major inconsistencies and added scenes. Mm. All the cameos, variants, how they die, and the journey is there, it's just different details put in place for some parts that you can go check out if you want. Now just a disclaimer for this stuff, in the build up to a movie, it's actually not considered fair use to report on leaks that you know to be true, which is why a lot of plot leak videos tend to have people saying, this apparently happens, rumor has it, and so on. Did you know who the guy was that they showed a gif of? In the, no. The warrior rolling his eyes? That's Sam Raimi's brother, Ted Raimi. Oh, uh, okay. That was from Xena, the warrior princess. Gotcha. Yeah, he shows up a lot in Sam Raimi's movies. I was surprised he didn't make a cameo appearance in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. He must have been busy that day. Anyway. If you say that things should be taken with a grain of salt, you're normally in the clear, which is why a lot of my videos that turn out to be true still have this kind of language in them. Now that the film is out though, I can say I know for definite there was a scene with Mordo in it in which he went to visit Wanda at the start of the movie. If you cast your mind back to the end of Doctor Strange, then you'll remember that the post credit scene had him going on a quest to kill the Wizarding World worse than Fantastic Beasts did. <laughs> in Multiverse of Madness, Strange even mentions how Mordo has been trying to kill him when he meets the Illuminati version, but this is something that we've never seen, and it's definitely not something that he would really know about, as Mordo never really said anything along those lines True at that. their last meeting. That's right. Now, Mordo was going to be the main villain that showed up in the introduction to the movie, and he'd be used to demonstrate Wanda's new ruthless attitude. He would go to attack her, and she'd turn him into Mom's spaghetti, beheading ah. him within seconds of his arrival. It was going to be a big way to start the film, and it instantly cemented Wanda as the villain. From here, we then jump to the Gap Junction, which is where we'd be introduced to America Chavez and Defender Strange. Seeing the movie for myself, I can definitely see why they cut this introduction, as I much prefer learning the twist as Doctor Strange discovers it. I think mm. it would make the movie pretty clunky to have this open it, learn she's bad, jump to the Gap Junction, then jump to the MCU, then have Strange go to Wanda to learn what we found out 20 minutes before. Now this also leaves Mordo's yeah. fate out in the open, and interestingly, both he and the A38 version are still alive. Mordo 838 is the only surviving Illuminati member, and perhaps they'll be doing something with him in the future. Huge shout out to Josh from Denim Nerds for pointing that out, and it does leave a lot in the air for the future of the franchise. Now, Tom Cruise's Iron Man is probably the biggest rumor that surrounded the movie before its release. Fueled by the Ultron bots and the quick cut of Captain Marvel, many thought that this was in fact him instead of Lashana Lynch. I might have said Mephisto was coming, yeah, but at least I can die happy knowing that I never said Lashana Lynch was Tom Cruise. Anyway, I'll let that go. I've taken the enough out of that one. I'm sorry. This is the last time. Now, I actually discussed this in a video and said how I'd heard from multiple sources that he wasn't going to be in the film, but that I'd also heard from some that I trusted that he actually was. It was all kind of up in the air, no one knew for definite, but Michael Waldron has discussed this rumor with Yahoo Entertainment. Initially, he said Tom Cruise was indeed on the cards for a cameo, but that they couldn't get him due to scheduling conflicts with the Mission Impossible movies. However, he did say that he was happy they got Heli Atwell, who is also starring in the upcoming MI films. Mission Impossible movies are always getting in the way of everybody else's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Mustache gate. Yes. Mission Impossible. Iron Man, uh, Tom Cruise version. Mission Impossible. Always. 
Yeah, that's why. It's a mission that's impossible. It makes everything else impossible is what it does. To get Tom Cruise in the MCU. Mm -hmm. I have actually heard there have been conversations behind the scenes and that there are plans to have Cruise appear in some form as Tony Stark further down the line. Much really like John good. Krasinski, yeah. it's a fan casting that people want and with Waldron admitting that he was brought up at one point, it could potentially be a possibility in a future film. There were also discussions like this with Deadpool and in an interview with comicbook.com, the screenwriter discussed how they did talk about bringing in the Merc with a mouth. However, they realized that due to the tone of the film, that this wasn't the right place to drop him in and ultimately scrapped him faster than Obadiah Stane knocks his tie out the way. How would this have been the wrong film to bring Deadpool in on when you literally are going through a cartoon universe? Yeah, but we didn't point. spend time in the cartoon universe. But the fact that you showed it at all shows the absurdity of just like how, where this could go. You could end up in a place where you have Deadpool breaking the fourth wall. Perhaps, perhaps. Maybe, maybe it could have worked. In one universe, they were literally paint. That doesn't make any sense. I know, but they didn't spend time that there. That makes as much the, sense the, as hot dog fingers. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, but at least with hot dog fingers, they explored it, right? Like, these universes that you're talking about were not even explored more than, oh, we jump through them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He, Deadpool could have easily made a quick, quick appearance during all that... You know, uh, a universe jumping. Yeah, I jumping. mean, I wouldn't have minded if it was just like literally he comes in and you see him in the corner or something. He says one line and then he pops you know, out. Yeah, after the dinosaurs. Many people, of course, thought they saw Deadpool on the poster for the movie, but they got you again, you punk. You damn chump. <laughs> see you, chump. <laughs> we also had a scene where we discovered the 616 version of Reed Richards was Jimmy Woo. What? And on top of this, there was also <laughs> supposed to be an appearance by Boulder the Brave, which I've seen certain elements for. In the Illuminati scene, we of course saw that there were six chairs and a space for Professor Rex. Balder was originally supposed to be the seventh member, but this has now kind of been brushed to the side, with the empty chair being chalked up to belonging to Supreme Strange. However, Mordo overtook his position, and this is because he wasn't in the Illuminati beforehand, which is why he didn't appear on Titan along with the rest of the group. During the fight with Wanda, Balder was going to be talked into ending his own life by the witch, but this was apparently taken out so that the focus for this could be given to Black Bolt. Again, it's probably the better way to do things, and there's already enough Illuminati members as it is, so I can see why they removed things for the final cut. This is a similar situation to Captain Marvel, who was originally supposed to appear at the end of Age of Ultron. They even filmed scenes for this with a stand-in, but they were removed for the final cut. Now today there was a report from Deadline which said that Daniel Craig was originally supposed to be playing Reed Richards. However, my sources told me about six months ago that he was actually playing Baller the Brave, and they sent some photos of props across as evidence. I think Ooh. Craig is Balder, aka Thor's brother, makes way more sense. That would have actually been a really interesting reaction if Daniel Craig showed up as Reed Richards. <laughs> like people going, whoa, whoa, that's not what we were asking for, but that's still pretty cool, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can you imagine yeah. me like, oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's okay. Not John Skrzynski though, my yeah. God. Who are you? Number four, is that your name? Richards. Reed Richards. Oh, that would have been a great line by Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah. Who are you supposed to be? Number four? What is that? Where's number one at? Stop, look, there's some kind of joke in there. He had a four on his, on uh, his outfit. Okay. And recently when stuff was cut, my sources said they couldn't understand why this was, as he's such a big name. Mm -hmm. However, apparently Craig dropping out was due to a spike in pandemic cases, so I think that's why he was removed and also replaced. Olsen recently dropped an interview stating that she'd never even met John Krasinski, and I believe that he was someone propped up in the reshoots, which is why his stuff looks a bit out of place probably shot on a green screen and then dropped in last minute in order to replace Craig who couldn't make it to the film. Namor 2 at one point was a member for the group and we know that he will be appearing in the upcoming Black Panther Wakanda Forever film. There is a bit of clunkiness to the whole thing in, in, in that sequence where like... I mean, you, you called know, it. John, John Krasinski gets turned into ribbons and Black Bolt, was that his name, Black Bolt? I, I don't know, I'm not familiar yeah, with Black that Bolt, character. Yeah. Black Bolt gets destroyed in the most vicious way possible and then the remaining two are just like, huh. No emotional response to the situation. They just watched two of their friends die. Two members of the Illuminati got killed in front of them. The Illuminati? The Illuminati got killed in front of them, and they're just like, oh, Lord, this is going to be an issue. Like, that was the, that was yeah. literally their, yeah. their response to that. But they're my. like, oh, it's okay. We didn't really like them that much anyway. Yeah. In the comics, he, like Professor X, Reed and Strange were all members of the Illuminati, but Namor was cut for a specific reason. Feige apparently wanted to save his introduction for the upcoming Black Panther sequel and thus they removed him early on in the scripting process hmm. so that his debut wouldn't be ruined. Okay. Now Waldron also discussed how Dr. Nicodemus West was going to be in the Illuminati universe as well. Played by Michael Stolberg, West Pauls from the comics and in those he was a villain. In the MCU, West was the one who operated on Strange's hands after the crash and he also appears in the film at the wedding. 
He definitely blames Strange for robbing him of the opportunity to say goodbye to his cat and also his brother. He seems to accept that there was no other way but mocks Strange a bit by sarcastically saying he was the best surgeon and the best superhero. Stillbog's name even appeared on the poster, so it was pretty clear that he might have had more of a major role or that they were hiding the cameos. Waldron stated yeah. that he worked at the Illuminati headquarters in 838 and that he would mock Strange during the lockup scene. When Wanda arrived to grab America, he would have been ripped apart with the rest of the Illuminati, but this death would have happened off screen. Mm. Waldron said that he died like Samuel L. Jackson in Jurassic Park and not like in Deep Blue Sea, though he said that would have been amazing. Now, much like how Jackson's Ray is killed off screen by a Velociraptor only for a body part to show up later on, Wes was going to be killed by Wanda, and as Christian and America fled to an elevator, the door would open and his head would roll out of it. Ugh. Pretty gory, and I would have loved to have seen this yeah. scene, but unfortunately, it's now on the cutting room floor along with West's head. Now, upon arri and, and Mordo's, to be fair. Now, upon arriving at Kamatosh... <laughs> That's not true. We didn't see Mordo. We didn't see him die. No, we didn't, but he's saying that that was a scene that was cut, so it's oh, gotcha. also on the cutting room floor like his head. Mm. Explaining jokes. Ha! I can't imagine how stressful it must have been for Feige and the rest of, you know, the Marvel producers to try and, you know, figure this out and piece it together. Yeah. You know, leading up to release going, okay. Oh, it's almost like making a commercial. So for those of you that have no idea, I used to basically kind of be a stepdad and my little girl at that time, uh, she was cast in an Apple commercial. And the way Apple does things is very interesting. Where what happened was she was cast in the ad, but it wasn't just her. There was two other actresses her age cast for the same exact role and they just shot all three. And they're like, we'll just decide later on who, who, you know, who we're gonna use. That sucks. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, when you've got that kind of money, you can do that. You just pay for the day rate, and yeah. you, whoever wins it at the end gets the buyout, yes. right? So when they're like, yo, Tom Cruise is really expensive, or this actor's really expensive, how can they just shoot it and not have it in the movie? Because they've got them, they're loaded. Yeah. Didn't you hear they bought Star Wars for four billion? Like, they're, they're, Disney, Marvel is loaded. They can make those kinds of decisions and, and just figure it out. They're like, okay, we shot Tom Cruise's stuff. We, but we can't use it because of this Reason. trajectory over yeah. here. So is he saying that it was shot and edited out or like they just never even shot that stuff? Tom Cruise? No, no, no. The other. The, the other. Yes. Okay. Wow. There's a movie called Joyride with Paul Walker. And if you watch the behind the scenes, there's like an hour of movie that was there was like eight different endings. And one of the different endings was like 40 minutes. Whoa. It was like, this is a whole other movie that they just cut out. It's crazy. And so it's not just Marvel. Like a lot of things go through this, but when you're Marvel and you've got these kinds of pressures, I would imagine it gets even worse. A whole host of new characters, including Rintra and Sarah. These aren't really expanded upon all that much in the film. Yeah. And if you don't know what comics I pulled from, you'd probably be like, giant minotaur walking around, weird. I know, They're all exactly. Funko Pops for them, even though they yeah. probably get about two minutes of screen time combined. Yep. Yeah. That's because the pair had much more expanded roles originally, and Sorrow mm. was actually teased at being a love interest for Wong. Yeah, but that's you what I thought. You somewhat get a nod towards this, as it seems like the pair could be a bit close, but any romantic feelings between them is completely skipped over. I don't know if it would have been too much of a distraction to have it in the movie, and that we'd even have enough time to fully flesh out the feelings that the pair share. It kind of also changes up the dynamics for the ending of the movie, as Wong says that he's pretty content with the way things are. He's somewhat happy. Happy Hogan, in a way. Wait, bad example. Now, Raimi did say that there would be three of the deleted scenes included in the home release of the film, and that oh. he knew what they were. However, he wouldn't tell us. I'm guessing that they're still finalizing what to put out there. Hmm. What would you have liked to have seen in the movie? Should these scenes have been kept? Comment below and let me know. I feel like the movie needed to be longer for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm just wondering as well, though, if they had shown more of the relationship between Sarah, or is it Sarah? Wong's love and, interest. Yeah, and yeah. Wong. Would that have bogged down the movie? I, I just feel like... That goes against <sighs> film rules. You cannot, especially Marvel film rules, you cannot show an Asian man kissing a love interest. It's just not allowed. That is why Aquafina did not kiss Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten and a Half Rings. That's a reference to a previous video. Because he should have been in this movie with a sling ring. I just wonder because it, it felt a little bit clunky that there was that scene where she like touches his face and then you go, oh wait, hold up. Were they in a relationship? That was a situation where there was no editing around that. Yeah. That was like... It was like, well... Okay, in these other like scenes, in these other 40 minutes somewhere, there is a scene where they are clearly in love and macking out. But we we had to cut it for time and reasons. Like, there's no other way to get to this part where this book goes away without her touching his face. Yeah. There's just no way, there's no two ways about it. We gotta then, show that. And then she had that little tear too. And I was like, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, they spent the I, money on that. They couldn't edit that out. I love like 
you know, just feeling emotional. I want to feel that thing, but like, I, I don't know their relationship. There's so. no room for that. Haven't you seen that all the Marvel movies lately have been two hours and six minutes? You're making jokes, I'm making right? jokes, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because they've all been quite long. Yeah, I know. There's no like, reason why, for this why? one to be shorter. Exactly. I would have liked the extra 10 minutes to spend with those two and understand like what the meaning of that touch was. And the other character, sorry, I've forgotten his name, but like the, the minotaur looking guy, the, the green guy with the horns. Yeah, that was just like, what the hell? I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. He looks like a cool character. He was so strongly featured in the trailer too. And I'm like, yeah. we don't know anything about this guy. He's just he's just cannon fodder for the most part. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? what is with that? Like, he looks interesting, though. I feel like that needs an explanation. But, hey, it's fantasy. It's a magic movie. So, whatever. The opening with Mordo uh, going after Wanda and her just straight up murdering his ass. Versus us learning about it through Doctor Strange. That's a badass scene. Like, I think that is shocking in the revelation of like, oh, wow, we thought Wanda was good and now, now she did this just supremely awful thing. But yeah, it would undercut the next scene. You wouldn't need that scene with Doctor Strange, really, because we know that she's evil. Mm -hmm. I think it was better that we discovered it at the same time. Well, I just had this thought of like, what if like when Mordor got killed, uh, Doctor Strange somehow felt it? Like when Obi-Wan Kenobi felt the presence of like, millions of people dying on that planet that got blown up by the Death Star, you know? Like, okay. Maybe somehow he felt it, and so he knew. So he wouldn't make a dumb decision, like, going after... I don't know. That, that just screws up the whole, like, trajectory of the film, so never mind. I mean, maybe not the trajectory, but the rhythm that they were trying to go for. Right, right. All of this screams to me that they rushed it. Ultimately, that's what it feels like. Because, like, oh, well, we had this thing, and but the, this thing over here, I'm like... It sounds like y'all needed another pass at the script before you went into principal photography. That's what it sounds like. Things are just changing like on the fly. That you, you had this whole sequence in the middle that you had to cut out and change out for different actors. But isn't that normal though with Marvel movies? Like they're changing stuff all the time, not just, you know, to keep actors kind of blind to what's going on so they can't spoil things, but because things are always changing. The script is never going to be finalized. The edit is never going to be completely finalized until they're about to put it out. And even then yeah. they can still make changes. Either way, I really enjoyed Doctor Strange and the two universes of madness. So you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Subscribe, bell icon, all the notifications. This up. I'm Jabby Kuei. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.